Uh, disk, to show that the moment of inertia of a disk, you've got the tape running under, yeah. going to an axis through its center point is given by the formula. What is the formula for the moment of inertia of the disk? Uh, L1 squared over 2. Oh. Andrew, you're going to start us off, or Kieran, you'll start us off at the back. What do we do first? I want to prove that this is the case. Step one. The final row is equal to what? Implies n equals no pi r squared. And the area of this is pi r squared. What do we do with that? Delta mass equals. Before we do, before we move on to delta mass, what do we do with this guy here? Actually, she might just turn off the vent. Just because the guy here. Yeah, put row on one side. Okay, I put row on one side from there. I get row is equal to. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Over pi r squared. Right, well, what do I do with that now? You leave it. So basically, you're going to leave all of that and use it as a substitution for me. Okay, so that goes off there to the side. From that, you still look at delta n is equal to. Rho times what? Delta area. So mass is equal to rho times the full mass is rho times the full area. Small mass is rho times a small area. And how do we get a small area of the circle? Uh, Ross, you're wrong. You displace uh, x from the center and you get. Uh, displace x from the center to that distance there, okay. Um, but then delta x uh, further. Uh, delta x, and that far out there. And then you draw two circles. And so you get a smaller area inside the circle. You basically say, okay, that's a small area of the big circle. So x is the distance from the center to that small area. The width of that small area is delta x. From there to there. And then you can uh, unwrap it and get a Rectangular shape. Okay, so if I unwrapped all of that, it would go like this. Strictly speaking, there'd be a slight curve on it here. Is that important? No, because you're reducing it to such a small area. To the yeah, bottom. because eventually I'd be reducing that width to, to the bare minimum. So therefore, that extra distance isn't significant. So we consider it to be a rectangle. If it was a rectangle, what would be the length of the rectangle? 2 pi x. Yeah, it would be the circumference of the circle, and the circumference would be 2 pi x. And what would be the width of the circle? Uh, delta x. That x. And that should be delta x. So back over here, delta m, my small mass is rho times my small area. My small mass is rho times, what's my small area now going to be? Uh, 2 pi x times delta x. And that we're going to use in a minute. Uh, Matthew, I'll skip you, or are you up to speed on this? Uh, not quite yet. Yeah, Jamie, one. next step. Um, Inertia is the sign. Symbol? Sigma. 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 Um, uh, delta m r squared. <coughs> I is sigma, delta m r squared. That's just a given, and we just take that in. In fact, all we're ever going to do is start off with that and substitute different values in. But that's basically our main starting point. These were just substitutions that I'm going to stick in in a minute. So keep going. Jamie, next step. I is sigma. Sigma. Rho 2 pi x uh, d, uh, dx r squared, or delta x r squared? It's delta m, so I get rho 2 pi x delta x r squared. Um, so rho 2 pi x by delta x, and I may put a bracket there just to show that this is something separate to this, and still multiplied by <coughs> r squared. One more step, Jamie, what's next? Um, put it as the integrated thing, so it's Rho 2 pi. Okay, I'm going to put an integral sign, so I'm going to replace the sigma by the integral sign. And what am I implying when I do that? It goes to the angle of the, the width of the dome. Yeah, the width of this guy here is getting less and less and less. So I'm taking that to its limit, to its smallest possible limit. And I just repl I just signify that by replacing the sigma by an integration sign. So that's really all the integration sign is doing. It's saying the width of the small area in question, you reduce it to the limit. In doing so, I can now take my constants outside. So, Jamie, what do you say they were? Uh, rho 2 pi. Rho 2 pi. R squared. You can take R squared as a 
No, R squared is X squared. Yeah. Yeah, this guy. Yeah, this guy here should have gone back here. It should have gone X squared. Because right. it's the distance from this guy here out. So yeah, that's my mistake. But you put it in X squared. So what am I going to have here? X squared goes there. X cubed. X cubed. Because there's another X. Multiplied by the X here. What well, happens to my delta X? Yeah. Yes. And what are my limits? Yeah, it's basically if I took that circle and you run you run the film forward and you take it from the beginning, at the very beginning, that comes all the way to here. And as you run it forward then, the x goes from there, from zero, all the way out there to a maximum. So my x value, the minimum value for x is zero, the maximum value is r. And as it goes out in that side, it goes out in that side. So I don't have to go from minus r to r, I just go from zero to r, and it takes it both sides. So my limits are zero to r. So from that, I come over here, I now integrate I uh, equals, in fact, what I'm now going to do, this is always a problem with port marker work, I'm going to get rid of that, and I'm going to come back up to the top. So at least now I have plenty of room. Do I need a bit to come up to me? Yeah, I, it's a problem, but you boys and girls are going to have to remember. So I equals, how do I integrate? Rho 2 pi, integral of x cubed. x squared to the power of j of 4. Yeah. Uh, what are my limits still, Shane? Uh, zero and R. Zero and R, so what's that going to become? Uh, well, two pi R is four. Yep. Four. Minus, if I put in my zero, I just get minus zero. So I equals two pi rho R to the four over four, and remember, at this stage, I'm now going to do what? So I did rho. My substitution. And what did I have for rho at the beginning? M over I R squared. So at this stage, we go the long way around, we'll say i equals, instead of rho, I'm going to put in m over pi r squared. So that goes in instead of rho, times 2 pi, make sure you keep that at the top, times r to the 4 over 4. And again, it's nice if you remember, they'll always give it to you what your answer should be, i is a half m r squared. So it just helps you to check, if I cancel out, would I get what that is back up there? So what cancels? The R squared. Goes into that. R squared times. I, I. Two. Goes into that two times. I, I. I cancels with that, and I'm left with M R squared over two. Okay. Mm -hmm. 20 marks out of 50 every year. One of three theorems come up. That's one of them. You just got to learn it out. Okay. So we've gone over the second one, we've stuck it on camera, that's the third one we stick on camera, we might, might not go over the first one. And when I rub that off, while you're still running there, I just want to talk about one more problem. And we may or may not stick it on the tape, then, depending on how long it takes. We've got the moment of inertia. How would you phrase how that bit is ro rotating about? It's the moment of inertia of a disk about where? About an axis. Perpendicular to the plane, so it's about an axis, perpendicular to the lamina if you want, perpendicular to the disc. Moment of inertia of an axis, perpendicular to the disc, what else? To its center. To its center. The reason I say that is because one of the questions you will be getting is, when you're going to start off, you might want to find the moment of inertia of, a, of an axis like that. Now if that's your disc, and if that's the axis, what way does it look like that would rotate? 